Make no mistake, credit for the liberation of Libya belongs to the people of Libya. It was Libyan men and women and children who took to the streets in peaceful protest, who faced down the tanks and endured the snipers' bullets. It was Libyan fighters, often outgunned and outnumbered, who fought pitched battles, town by town, block by block. It was Libyan activists in the underground, in chat rooms, in mosques, who kept a revolution alive even after some of the world had given up hope. At the same time, Libya is a lesson in what the international community can achieve when we stand together as one. I said at the beginning of this process, we cannot and should not intervene every time there is an injustice in the world. Yet it's also true that there are times where the world could have and should have summoned the will to prevent the killing of innocents on a horrific scale. And we are forever haunted by the atrocities that we did not prevent and the lives that we did not save. But this time was different. This time we, through the United Nations, found the courage and the collective will to act. Today I can announce that our ambassador is on his way back to Tripoli. And this week, the American flag that was lowered before our embassy was attacked will be raised again over a reopened American embassy. We will work closely with the new UN support mission in Libya and with the nations here today to assist the Libyan people in the hard work ahead. In the days after Tripoli fell, people rejoiced in the streets and pondered the role ahead. And one of those Libyans said, we have this chance now to do something good for our country, a chance we have dreamed of for so long. So to the Libyan people, this is your chance. And today the world is saying with one unmistakable voice, we will stand with you as you seize this moment of promise, as you reach for the freedom, the dignity, and the opportunity that you deserve.